This is William Patterson University Television. Welcome back to the desk. The Pioneers are into their last four games of the season. And here to break it all down, we have Andrew Balistrieri, Mark, Andrew Gavin, finally, <laughs> and Joe. Guys, Joe and I, we had the privilege of being at the Montclair State game the other week, excuse me, a couple days ago. Uh, Red Hawks, Route 46 rivalry. It was a fun game. The women took care of business. Very close final score. Mark, it was a very exciting game. Take us to this one. Yeah, you know, we'll take a look at the stats from that game here. And, uh, you know, the Pioneers end up winning 56 to 52, four point game. Got a little dicey at the end, you know. There were some questions about whether they could close the game. They end up doing that and they complete the regular season sweep of Montclair. They beat them back in December here at the rec center, 60 to 49. You know, the, like I said, they complete the sweep. Some standout players, Brianna Smith, 25 points. 17 in the second half. That's insane. I mean, eight points to start off, and then you explode with 17 in the second half. And Justina Cabezas had a double-double. Andrew? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was a tough shooting night for everybody other than Bree Smith, pretty much. She had five threes, um, and they didn't take as a lot of threes. They only took nine threes. They hit six of them. This, uh, so far this season, they haven't been able to hit threes well, but now they're finally doing that, and this is a huge win in the NJAC standings. Great job for the Pioneers. Yeah, you both mentioned Brianna Smith. I couldn't believe when she shot like a left-handed wow. three-pointer. She's not a lefty. Like end of the shot clock, that was such a like. A, it up I mean, there, really. such a clutch shot to hit. Joe, what what did you see from the game? Yeah, I mean, Jimmy, again, you and me called the game. There's a lot of things that we could talk about. It's really you know the turnover game. You know, they did a good job really limiting Nikki Carter to be a playmaker. Even though she scored a lot for the team, you know, she was able to get the ball a lot to her teammates and, and be a playmaker on the floor. Uh, three-pointers, you know, they were just you know, shooting in well from three-point line. Brianna Smith was on fire. Justina Cabeza, her mid-range is almost automatic every time she shoots. So overall, you know, the team did a you know, phenomenal job, really causing turnovers as well on the fast break, too. So that's why they came away with the win. Oh. I, I used to pray for times like this. <laughs> Andrew Gavin, back on the desk. Thank you for having me. What did you see from the game? So going off what uh, Joe said, winning the turnover battle is always essential. And another thing, is when you get rebounds and points off turnovers, you're gonna win games. And they did that twice against Montclair. You know, that definitely the turnover battle was very <laughs> crucial. Um, Pioneer sit in a similar position as they did last season. They were able to make a little bit of a run in the NJAC tournament, got to the semifinals. The team's very comparable to last season. Andrew, take us through this year compared to last season's team. So right now the conference record from last year, they were they were eleven and seven. And the conference record this year, they're eight and six they have four NJAC games left. If they went out, they could be better than last year's record. The points per game, field goal percentage, three-point percentage, and turnovers per game, all kind of identical. But right now, something to key in on is Justina Capesa and Brianna Smith. They're really blossoming right now, and they're really turning the table with the last four games looking forward. Yeah, when Justina and Bree Smith get cooking, when they combine for probably like 30 more points, they got a real shot to win every single game. Both of them great scorers. Mark? What do you like this team's chances going forward? I think you know they're really well, you know, and I think a big part of that is the newcomers on the team. They're filling their roles well, and that really leads to sustain, sustained success, as we've seen with this team so far. I think they have a really good shot at making the playoffs this year. Yeah, you talked about newcomers. Luna Kirby's played very uh, crucial minutes for the Pioneers the last couple of games on the defensive end, throwing in some points as well. So I wanted to make sure we talked about that on this episode. Andrew. Uh, yeah, I think these two teams are very similar. Just without Brianna Brooks this year, instead of that, we now have Renee Wells. And another thing I want to point out is, as a lot of players like Yakira Rosa, uh, Victoria Paladino, Bree Smith, they all really stepped up this year, and Justina Cabezas kept doing her thing. And I remember saying last year, this team has a chance to go deep in the NJAC. I really think that they can do it again. They can beat anybody when they're on the top of their game. Yeah, that backcourt defensively very uh, can cause fits for anyone. Joe? Listen, give a lot of credit to Coach Monahan, keeping his team together, keeping his team chemistry up. And again, the addition of Renee Wells, and you know, it looks like the, uh, an additional piece that makes the team even better in some way. But listen, they have a chance to really go far again like last year. Numbers are very identical. Uh, however, I want to see the bench do more whenever they do get into the game. Obviously, we see the, that starting five play 30, 30 plus minutes averaging at most. But when the bench does go in, I want to see how much of an impact they can do as the last four NJ games come along. Yeah, you know, talk about that bench, Joe. Alice McBride played a big difference against Stockton and Montclair State, their last two wins. A lot of offensive rebounds, getting to the free throw line as well. Jade Martinez contributing in the point score as well. So switching things over to the men's side of things, you know, had, had their share of struggles lately, but a number of guys are putting in work. Got that dog in him, Andrew. I know you always like to say that. Who's flown under the radar for this team? Well, one guy that's got that dog in him is Cesar Silvestro, the junior forward. He has been an absolute beast this year. We'll take a look at his stats. 
in the 18 minutes he's getting, he's uh, averaging about seven points a game, and he's got some very good shooting numbers, 47% from the field, 38 from three. He's taken a huge leap this year. He's now the tallest guy on the team after Evensman Fleury uh, has left. And every time he comes onto the floor off the bench, he brings a ton of energy. He's always going for blocks, going for boards. He's not a guy that's going to give you 20 points a night, but he's always going to give you 100% effort. Yeah, Michael Gilmore came on the show and talked about how much Caesar has stepped up this season. And as the season has progressed, we've really seen that come to life. Joe, who do you like? Yeah, I'm going to go off on Natalia Valentin, the sophomore guard. Listen, he's actually improved a lot. His, his growth in room has improved a lot as well. Listen, he's averaging 26 point minutes per game, 11 points per game, 39.5% in the three point. I love the way he's been playing. He also played very hard as well. He's also a very good hustle player. And a very good hustle player. His hair may have gotten shorter, but his game has certainly grown. Mark. I'm going to take Adrian Lopez, you know, really impressive player, shooting 49% from the field right now, 25, 26 minutes per game, 49 field goal percentage, 28 three-point percentage, you know, and the thing that stands out about, about him is how well-rounded he is, you know. Also, 29 steals and seven blocks on the season. It's just really good to see him come out and do what you need him to do whenever you need him to do it. Yeah, one of the leaders of the team. It was unfortunate to see him miss some time this season. It was nice to see him get back on the floor against Montclair State and contribute in a good way. Gavin? I'm going to go with Tyreek Montgomery, second on the team with points, second on the team with rebounds, and he's also leading the team with steals right now. And right now he's a junior, he's averaging about 30 minutes a game and about 13 and a half points per game. He's really, really looking good right now. He's a uh, really great guard. Yeah, definitely underrated player in all of the NJAC. Made a big difference, kind of brings a lot of energy uh, into the veins of this team. But they have a big game going down to TCNJ upcoming on Saturday. Probably a game they could have won at home last time they squared off against TCNJ. But Joe, I want to know what you, your thoughts on this game. The Pioneers, can they get the W this weekend? Yeah, well, listen, it's another important game. We take a look at the stats here compare, comparing both teams. I mean, both teams right now above, uh, under 500, excuse me, in conference play. But uh, TCNJ is a little bit better. I mean, overall, points per game, William Patterson actually has more than TCNJ. And overall, field goal, three-point turnovers, a little bit very, pretty much identical. But again, it comes down to how do you play in the free throw percentage, right? Because when you take a look at their last previous meeting, free throws were super important. William Patterson did not convert many free throws at all in the second half in that game. And TCNJ did, did, just did a better job, you know, completing their free throws against the line. So I definitely see that more in, in between this game uh, coming up for them. Dallas Trey, what's your outlook? Yeah, the Pioneers are trying to play spoiler, which I love. The Lions right now sitting at fifth in the NJAC, uh, six and eight in the conference. And the Pioneers haven't beaten TCNJ since 2019. And the Pioneer season might pretty much be over at this point, but they can go, they can gain some confidence in these last couple of games, bring that over to next year, um, beat one of their rivals, and, and crush their season. Mark? Yeah, you know, it should be a good chance for the team to rebound after a tough loss to Montclair State. You know, TCNJ is 7 and 14 on the season, but six of those seven wins are conference wins, so I wouldn't underestimate them just because of their record. You yeah, know, definitely a winnable game. Andrew, close us out. As you said, definitely winnable game. They only lost by nine last month. Look for them to clean up their mistakes against Montclair and going for it, firing off all cylinders. I think we can get a W in TCNJ. Yeah, if they can get out early, limit those turnovers, kind of keep the foot on the throat of TCNJ. We've seen the men's team get out to leads, and sometimes like teams go on that little bit of a run, just a little bit too hard to claw back in. But they can definitely get it done if they play like they did against Kane not that long ago. But as the William Patterson basketball team's season begins its departure, the NHL season is heating up with Joe and the NHL crew is heading things over to the ice. We're going to break it all down for you next.